Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Miss Drea Show, where I'm your host, Miss Drea. Here I have with me my beautiful co-host, Lady T. Hello, y'all. And I also have with me Miss Rebecca Vons, a.k.a. Butterfly. Peace and blessings, beautiful people. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> now, Hi. I first would like to open up the show speaking on Donald Trump. We all know that Donald Trump is running for president, and recently Donald Trump made a comment towards the Muslims. And now, ever since he's been in the media, he, his numbers have went up dramatically to where he's the number one runner. What do you guys think about Donald Trump? I, I, th I love him, as a matter of fact, because, you know, he says stuff that all of us, Think about when he did say that foolishness, though, I was like, you know what? He might be on point because I don't want none of them. You know how you go and order your fish sandwich and you, somebody come in the restaurant and all bandaged up and covered with their head and nothing showing. And they, you can't even tell what color hair they wearing that day. I'm scared of them kind of people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you can't just put it out there like no Muslims can come. Exactly. You, know, you can't do that. But this fool... I'm waiting to see what he's going to say next week because it's good for the comedy. Um, I just love him. I hope he run for a prayer. I hope he make it all the way through, get rid of Jeb, Marco Rubio, all the rest of them, and just let him go against Hillary. What do you think, Rebecca? All I can say is get out and vote, black folks. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. If you think you got it bad and hard now and everybody want to claim Barack Obama has done nothing for the black people, I don't know what you would be expecting that Donald Trump going to do something for you. But do you think that he actually have a chance? With the way that we, this world operates, anything is possible. And believe it or not, you have more jackrabbits and crazy people than you have sane people. So... It's a strong possibility. Think about it. If yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger can be mayor in California, anything is possible. It, it's scary. It is scary. Very you scary. You don't know what the next person thinking. You could be right beside your coworker, and your coworker is secretly voting for this fool. You don't know. <laughs> the you thing know? about it is Donald Trump is a businessman. Now, the United States is nothing more but a corporation. Mm -hmm. So Donald Trump is very successful in everything he does business-wise. Now, his mouth may fly off the handle at times, but he's a very successful man. Just going off that alone, if we were just to decide whether or not he should be president off of that, he's a businessman. He and it's a business. Is. So, And everything that he does is strategic. And one of our guests tonight, um, oh, God, I love her to death. Uh, when you guys see her, you're going to understand why. But one of our guests tonight, Miss, Miss Ann, told me once, no publicity is bad publicity. Exactly. So Donald Trump putting exactly. it out there, exactly. and more and more people are into him. So mm -hmm. I, I can't wait till we get her. Oh, my goodness. No publicity. So if y'all see me um, sitting outside on a yam naked, <laughs> Oh, and you put it on Channel 7, remember, no publicity is bad publicity. And he's actually exercising what I say that life is three factors of mental strategy and numbers. Exactly. 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 Now, um, if you guys have any comments, feel free to comment and we'll check them out and see what you all have to say. Sorry. Now, I'm going to get into... Miss Butterfly. Butterfly. How are you? I'm doing just fine, grand, lovely, and all the good words in the dictionary. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to the Miss Drea Show. It's a pleasure and honor and privilege to be here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Where are you from? Born and raised right here in the MIA. Okay. Now, you've been doing um, poetry since you were 10 years old, correct? I've been pinning since I was 10. Okay. So, 33 years okay. average. Yeah. What was it that inspired you to start that young? Langston Hughes, that mother to son poem, and just the melody and the rhythmic portion of it. But basically, that one line of, you know, him saying, you know, his mother telling him, you know, don't you sit down on them steps because life is too hard. And that right there stuck. Mm -hmm. Because even at a young age, you do, you tend to just not give in, kind of like being that 
kid at school during PE and you're the last one to get picked for the team or either you don't get picked for the team. And so that one time that that happens, you're like, okay, well, I don't want to participate in anything that they have in PE anymore. Whereas your attitude should be, okay, they didn't pick me on Monday. Maybe they'll pick me on Tuesday. They don't pick me, you know, but just keep going and keep going. So, yeah. Okay. Now it was 1997, if I'm correct, where you actually mustered up the courage to step out into the poetry scene. Well, actually it wasn't really, courage it was more of a push I I definitely was that writer and that one that poetry and just penny words was my escape and just Mm -hmm. for me like with Maya Angelou same thing with her Mm -hmm. it was for her it was that personal space and a companion at the time was like reading her work and was like wait a minute this needs to get out to the world. People, you know, as you can see, the rest is history. And so at the time I had purchased my car in 95, but in 97, I had walked in to pay my car insurance and my agent was on the phone and she was like, sit down, you know, wait. So, you know, when you're sitting across from somebody's desk, you see everything that they have up there. So I noticed a blue sheet of paper, but I saw the word poetry. So I tapped it and she shoved it at me. And so when I flipped it over and looked at it, it was actually for an open mic night, Body, Mind, and Soul, that had started the Wednesday before. So this, that week, Wednesday, would have been their second week. Mm -hmm. So when she got off the phone, she said, this is why I told you to wait. And I've been on the scene ever since. I went full-time in 2002, and I've been doing it full-time for 13 years now. Ain't that something? I'm just going to pay her insurance. (laughs) What was it that, um, what was the deciding factor that pushed you to, do poetry full-time it was more less the the idea that I've always been into the arts ever since I was a little girl I was I was that one that I participated in the plays and stuff that they did at church school drama and everything and so I knew that the arts was that passion and it wasn't until one night I was actually at an open mic night and the host was on stage and she said, you know, it's one thing that you come out to the open mic nights and you get up and do what you have to do, but you don't want it to just remain a hobby, you know? And so sure enough, I thought about it and I went home and I did. I said in the dark, I asked myself the million and one questions. Will you be able to handle this? Will you know you have to make a lot of sacrifices? Will you know you'll lose these people, but you'll gain these people? And of course, you know, the tears come because of change, especially when you know you're leaving where you'll take home before taxes, well, after taxes is 2500 to $3,000 every two weeks to where you don't know when you're going to make that or if you're going to make that. But it was, a not, it was just there, you know, and so I, I went for it. I, I leaped. I didn't jump. I didn't walk. Because when you walk out on faith, you're still unsure. Mm -hmm. When you leap, it is what it is. You're going to fly or something positive you hope to happen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you've written three poetry books. Mm -hmm. You have done 12 albums. Mm -hmm. And you've also directed and produced nine stage plays. Well, actually, production shows. Okay. So that's, that's what I meant to say. I apologize. Um, what inspired you to do music? I love music. Ever since I was five, I, I got into music at the age of five and poetry came at 10. So that's why as a poet and doing it full time, but I fuse the two. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes it, it gets me in trouble. Some places I go, you know, people will be like, I wanted a full song, you know, <laughs> and, you know, so yeah, I dig into the crates and find that one song that fits the vibe of the poem that I'm doing. Wow. So you're a singer. I don't claim it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't claim it. I just, I can hold a note. Okay. 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 I can, okay. I can. You are leaping, remember? Yeah, leaping I know. I, I mean, it's an honor when you have Howard mm-hmm. Hewitt tell you you can sing. Yeah. Like literally, it's, it's an honor. But so I, how long have you been singing? Since I was five. <laughs> oh, just... So how long have you been singing perfect? Because Recording. every time I've seen you, it's been poetry. Um, and I know that you infuse music into your poetry. Yeah. However, I had no idea that you actually take the mic and just, and I am dead. 
I didn't know you did that part. It's, you know, singing, it's, singing. It's, it's, it's a secret side of me. I, I pull it out at certain venues. and Like, I love to rock out with a band. Okay. If there's if there's a live band, I'll I'll do an impromptu, you know, make okay. up the song right there and then as I'm going along. Okay, well, that makes sense. That makes sense because we had a guest not too long ago, Larry Gordon, mm-hmm. Larry mm-hmm. Dog, um, and he's a comedian who also is Sings. a singer and a band leader, and he fried chicken and mop flows. He do everything. <laughs> so when I lately, I was, no, 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 I'm giving this brother props because y'all know we got to work in this field. Uh, I'm on the drill show still humping. <laughs> so um, with this kind of mindset, I've seen you several times where he, where he, so now it's coming through because his band plays a lot. Yes. So have you been performing with with the Larry Gordon's band? I've done two shows, well, maybe three um, shows with him that he's had his band. Um, it's been either somebody's um, retirement party or a community um, organization event. Yeah, Very good. Yeah. Very good. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have more with Miss Butterfly Vaughn. Well, thank you. Miss Butterfly. <laughs> 